supposed to fight Try, Trying to see what it's like, take me, so I roll the dice Look up to no one else, but your yeah, house shy yeah. I got real power, Hebrew is a lie Of all nations, and kindreds, and people, and tongues Stood before the throne And before and That's what you wanted, right? All nations, people, kindreds, and tongues right. One, finish this right And before the Lamb Clothed with white robes and palms in their hands, right. and cry with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood, stood round about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts and fell before the throne on their faces. Now, in Revelation, the seventh chapter, is chiefly going into the, the elect men being sealed 12,000 from each tribe chiefly until those men are sealed the destruction has to wait right then it proceeds to say of all nations now we can't just read this and say well hold on that's talking about because the average person would think that's talking about everybody right all kendrick's tongues peoples now my question to you is because you believe that's talking about everybody correct so my question to you is what does those words mean in the Greek? Do you know? Tongues means languages. Okay, tongues mean languages. Yeah. So people that speak different languages. What and about? So pan, the word pan would have been used there, or, or panta. Right. And that means all inclusive everything. But that doesn't mean that doesn't mean of all nations, because you have you have a lot of people that speak a lot of different languages, especially during this time of the Roman Empire. So why why did why did the New Testament get written in Greek? Why did it get written in Greek? Because that was pre the predominant language, ultimately, so the Jews could understand. Because you had a man by the name of Ptolemy II, Philadelphia, in 285 BC, he had to get that copy from the Greek Septuagint because most of the Jews spoke Greek due to the Greek colonization. That's right. That's right. Not, not most of the Jews. The Jews have a very. You said not most of them. The Jews have a very powerful sense of identity given to them by God. In fact, it's really miraculous that they're still a people today because they've been so scattered throughout the world. It's well, they will always be a people. Right. But God's during that people. time, the Greek influence was heavy not only on the Jews, but everywhere. Right. So if you didn't speak, let's go to 2 Maccabees 6 and 8. If you didn't speak the language of the Greeks, if you didn't get down to the customs, then... That's, that's from the Apocrypha. That's not a holy, that's not a portion of God's holy word. You said the Apocrypha is not a portion of... Do you know what the book of Maccabees is? Yeah, it's an intertestamental period between uh, Malachi and Matthew. And, do the inter and, and what do you read? Because in, in the book of Daniel, the seventh chapter, you read about four beasts, right? Right? That being what? The Babylonians, right. the Greeks, right. the Persians, right. and the Romans. Right. You read about the Babylonians, the Assyrians, and the Persians in the Old Testament, correct? The New Testament read about the Romans. What do you read about the Greeks in the Bible? Uh oh. Uh -oh. Where are the Greeks in the Bible? <laughs> Where are the Greeks in, in the Bible? In in Romans, in the Book of Romans. The Greeks are in the Book of Romans. Yeah. And no, they're, they're not. The, hang on. The word Greek is used to describe Gentiles or Rome. anyone who's not Jewish. That, that's not fairly Rulership. true. Rulership. That's not fairly true. The only way you find about the Greeks. It's in during the intertestamental medial period, which is found in the Apocrypha. What? The Hasmonean dynasty. I have Greeks right here in John that are seeking for Jesus. Well, hold on. John Before you bring that up, we want to answer this, finish answering this question. He had two questions. Revelation 7 and 9, the Apocrypha not being a part of God's word. So let's go to the 12,000 real quick. You notice the tribe of Dan's not in there. Hold on. You're jumping too many points. We know that Dan is not in there for a reason. He got cursed. He got cursed Dan by got father. diminished. Now, yeah. can we pull this up in a um in a, in a blue letter? Now, let's go to Acts 25. Let's see what all nations is talking about. Let's bring this up. Let's go to Acts chapter 2 and verse 5. It's, the word Panta, and it means it's inclusive. There's no exclusion. It's the book of Acts. Well, we got to see why did it say all nations? You know? It's the book of Acts chapter 2 verse 5. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem. Jews it says what there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews devout men out of every nation out of what out of every nation out of what 
out of every nation. So the reason why I said out of all nations because guess what? As a curse, the Israelites will be scattered into all nations. Let's go to Deuteronomy 28 and 64. So when you when you read all nations in the New Testament, that's not talking about everybody. You can't you can't forget that the Israelites were scattered literally into the four corners of the earth everywhere due to their disobedience. So let's, let's put some weight on this. What are the last words in the Bible? Hold on, we don't answer that. Let me bring this out with this verse. I'm gonna give you the floor. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 64. Bro. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known even wood and stone. See that? So that's that being a curse. Even when you go to the blue letter, now go to this word nation in the blue letter. Then we're gonna give you the floor. The word nation and the blue letter. And it's in the Greek. Ethnos. Right. A multitude, whether of men or of beasts, associated or living together. Right. It says a tribe. A what? A, a tribe. tribe. A what? A, a tribe. tribe. You know A nation, people group, multitude individuals of same nature or genus. So it says that it's nation, that name. nation, that they read about all nations, they have the same genus, meaning they have the same genealogy are the same group of people. Mm. So that can't be talking about different people out of all nations or what? everybody. That has to be one Pacific nation of the same genus type. Mm. Sounds like you're making that up. We, well, how are we making this scholarship? All right, how are we making this up? So oh when, something, when something says all, it can't mean just one. You know, you know, understanding. Grammatically, it. grammatically, you know the difference between singular and plural, right? Absolutely. All right. So is that word grammatically singular or plural? That's why we just went to the definition. It's plural. Read, read this again. <laughs> it says, "Ethnos" in the Greek. This is the Greek word for nation. Ethnos, a multitude of individuals of the same nature and or it's, genus. And it's actually a noun, All right? So. Right? so, so What's your point? So, if you take one word, let's say luo, there are more than 50 different forms of that word that all mean something different. The lexical form of the word is masculine. There's also a feminine use for it. There's also a neuter use for it. All right, and depending on how it's used in a sentence, changes whether it's aorist, which is a past tense, whether it's future tense, whether it's second aorist. You know, I'm, I'm just now learning Greek. Like, I'm not and, a Greek scholar, right. but I do understand that it's way more complicated than the English gives it credit for. And and that's why when you're dealing with the Greek, you have to go into those words. Not only that, you have to go in to, according to the precepts of the Bible. Because right. that Greek word, we don't just hardly go into Greek all the time. That's why we went to the verses for us, then we broke it down into Greek. And literally says a tribe. What people is a tribe? The children of Israel or a multitude. Jacob, let's go to Second Andrews 3 and 36 and let's deal with the Apocrypha because you say the Apocrypha is not authoritative. We're finna, we finna prove that to not to be true. All right. Now, why don't you believe in the Apocrypha? Because it, it contradicts to other teachings in the Holy Book and God can't contradict himself. Now, before, all right, let's bring this out first, then we're going to deal with that. Second Andrews 3 and 36. It's the book of Second Andrews. Second Andrews 3 and 16. It's the book of Second Andrews, chapter 3. Verse 16, no. and unto him thou gavest Isaac, and unto Isaac also thou gavest Jacob and Esau. As for Jacob, thou didst choose him to thee and put by Esau. And so Jacob became a great multitude. Became a what? Became a great multitude. What is that multitude in Revelation uh, chapter 7? And Jacob became a great multitude. That multitude out of all the that multitude is talking about the Israelites. Right. right. That's what it's talking about. Now, what in the Apocrypha contradicts itself with the Holy, with the rest of the scriptures? All right. So, I'm not an uh, intertestamental period scholar. I haven't done a ton of research on this. I've only been through one class called Bible Introduction, and I I trust the professors that I study under because they do have doctorates 
in these studies, specifically like New Testament theology or intertestamental theology. Okay. And they, they showed, I, I went through the class, I had the notes, but they show where information from the Apocrypha doesn't line up with the Old Testament, it doesn't line up with the New Testament, and it doesn't line up with extra biblical historical sources. Like what? Yeah, I'm not the scholar that can give you that information, but I do, have, first, I do have it in my notes back in school. Let's go to First Thessalonians 5 and 21, and let's go to John chapter 10 and 22. All right. I appreciate the hard work that you're doing. I keep praying that God will keep leading you to the truth. What, what's, what's your nationality? Um, my family came here 200 years ago. I think I'm Scots Irish. Well, I don't know if God, I don't know what God you worship, but the God of Israel is not hearing your prayers. Right. I pray to my Father Yahweh. Okay. Well, we don't know. We don't. We don't know who Yahweh is. Yahweh, it's, it's, Yahweh is the burning bush that says, I am who I am. Well, well that's, not, that's not Yahweh. That's not Yahweh. Read this. It's the book of 1 Thessalonians, chapter 5, verse 21. No. Prove all things. You're right. Prove all things. What God say? Prove all things. You forgot your notes at home. Prove all things. We're saying prove all things. Right. So if you say the Apocrypha, it's not authoritative, and you're not proving it, we have to believe the most high over man. Right. So I, I I want you to answer this question for me. Bring out John 10 and 22. Seeing that the Apocrypha is, is, is not, and people don't know the Apocrypha is actually history. And it was a, actually a part of the Bible where you go back to the Greek Septuagint, etc. It was already inserted in there. The only reason why you don't believe it's authoritative because the Protestant church told you that in the 1800s. Right, that's right. Now, Let's bring this out. And go to 1 Maccabees 4 and 56. It's the mighty book of John, chapter 10 and verse 22. Now you believe in the New Testament, right? Amen. All right. Let's read this. And it was in Jerusalem, the feast of dedication. The what? The, the feast, feast of dedication. dedication. The what? The feast of dedication. Read on. And it was winter. Read on. And Yahweh Shai walks in the temple. Right? So, and Jesus walks in the temple. So Christ in the New Testament is keeping the feast of the dedication. All right. Where can you read about the feast of the dedication at? The Old Testament. Teacher. Where in the Old Testament? Feast of the Old, probably in Leviticus. Are you sure? Deuteronomy or Leviticus. What about you? Do you know Vincent? Couldn't tell you. Let's go to First Maccabees four and fifty-six. This the book of First. This the book of First Maccabees chapter four and verse twenty-six. Yeah. Fifty-six. 56. And when they had rent in pieces the books of the law which they found. It's Maccabees 4 and 56. You and 2. Right? So the only place you can read about the Feast of Dedication is in the book of the Maccabees. Seeing that after the Greeks destroyed their altar, they dedicated it, they dedicated it back to the Mosai. Let's bring this up. It's the book of 1 Maccabees chapter 4 verse 56 oh. and so they kept the dedication of the altar eight yeah, what? and so they kept the dedication of the altar eight days and offer burnt and offer burnt offerings with gladness and sacrifice the sacrifice of deliverance and praise so that means Christ had to read the book of Maccabees right for him to know that So it's the it's the book of Maccabees authoritative. Hey, the book of Enoch, right? Oh. No, no, we not not even hey, not even want to switch. Jude, Jude quotes the book of Enoch. Does that no, make the book of Enoch the book of Enoch. Hey, look, we have Jesus. We have quotes from Satan in God's word. Is does that make Satan authoritative? Let's go to the book. You don't know. You don't know what that's going. Let's go to Jude one and fourteen. Enoch never quoted the book of Enoch. Now. Jude never quoted the book of Enoch. Are you sure? Let's, what did he quote in the book of Enoch? Have to read you. Well, we're going to read it right now. He didn't. What right. Jude did was he quoted an account that happened to Enoch. Right. For example, what did, Paul, what, did, what did Luke do in the book of Hebrews? He quoted something that Enoch did that wasn't necessarily in the book of Enoch. Right. King Solomon did the same thing. God translated Enoch so that wickedness wouldn't alter his understanding. Right. Now, is that in the book of Enoch? No, it's not in there at all, but yet he still had that account due to the wisdom and the secrets that was given to him by the Mosai. Right. Let's bring this up. Would you want to go? 
Jude 1 and 14. It's the book of Jude 1 and 14. Yeah. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousand of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Now, where is that in the book of Enoch? I haven't read the book of Enoch. Well, so how do you know that he's quoting that? Uh, I was learning Preach. in class. Preach. So yeah. you just, Preach. you had some Vincent that you want to bring out. You look like you want to bring so out something. You, 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 I do. You showed me something that I need to look deeper into. Yeah, I, I would definitely say that the Apocrypha is most definitely authoritative by the Most High God. I mean, do you know the book of Daniel is literally, Daniel is mentioned in the Apocrypha? You have Nebuchadnezzar in there. Like, the Apocrypha is history. All right. Hang on, hang on. Have you ever looked at the Book of Mormon? No, the Book of Mormon is trash. It's a doctrine of demons. We know it is. It's, it's extremely eloquently written on we know it. We know it is, but that's not the apocrypha, though. Right. I mean, just because it it has some truth in it doesn't mean it's authoritative. It all of it is authoritative. And so you can can you disprove this wrong? Which one? The apocrypha. You know, I've been Christian for five years, and I have not gone that far into studying. Well, maybe you need to stop. Maybe you just need to just give it up. I got plenty of life in front of me. I'm here. Right. To, I'm here to learn. That's God. Well, this Bible, being in general, this Bible not even for you. If we want to be honest, this Bible, who, who is the Bible for? Well, here, let me put some weight on you then. Because this is weight that I know comes from God. The last words in the Bible. You talking about that Revelation? Revelation 22. What about it? Anyone who adds to the words of this book, the plagues of this book, will be added to him. Right. Anyone who takes away from the words of this book, his his place in the heavens will be taken from you. Right. What's your point? If you guys are found in danger of adding to God's word, you will have the plagues of this book added to you. How are we adding to his word? Prove. Prove it. You can't, you can't prove it. I'm here. I'm here. So and, and, until you can prove it, because what you're doing is you're bringing up a false accusation. No, no, no. Right. You brought that out of, out of First Thessalonians, right? Absolutely. Okay, do you know about the herm you know about hermeneutics? Some sort of it. What's it, your point? It's a standard for studying the word, right? Right. So hermeneutics says a text out of context is a pretext. That means if you read something for your own belief and you use it out of the context of that of that book, then you're using it as a pretext for your own beliefs. Well, if if that's the case, then. The whole, all the epistles, you can, you're not allowed to read no epistles. Right. Because in context, those epistles, Paul is writing that to people, to churches that's actually dealing with certain things. So here's the that means you can't take nothing from the book of Corinthians at all and add it to your life. It doesn't mean that. It doesn't it, I mean, according to hermeneutics, that's what you're saying. No, no, according to hermeneutics, the reason why we have the Bible... It was preserved for all people at all times. That's what makes it God's No, it word. wasn't. Wait, yeah, let's go to Psalms chapter 147 and 19. Nowhere in the Bible did God said these statues. Well, hold on. Why didn't the Lord make these statues and commandments with everybody on Mount Sinai? Why did he only make it for the Israelites? Why did he give the commandments to everybody on Mount Sinai? set apart a people for himself you said what he set apart a people for himself See, and what people is that the israelites yeah. uh, that's right so vincent he, he right what you gonna come to find out the bible is written by the israelites he promised to abraham didn't he absolutely do you know that do you remember that promise yes right. now who wrote the bible what nation of people wrote the bible which part of it i mean all of it okay so some 40 different authors over the course of 1,500 years. And what was their nationalities? What was their ethnicity? What was Moses? Israelite. What was Isaiah? They were all Israelites. That's right. So, so seeing that it's written by Israelites, who do you think it's written for? The oracles of God were given to the Israelites. Who? So who is it for? 
all people. Read Psalm this. 47, Psalm 47, one right there. Just the book of Psalms, chapter 147, and verse 19. No. He showed his word unto Jacob. He does what? He showed his word unto Jacob. No, everybody. He showed his word unto Jacob. The whole wide world. He showed his word unto Jacob. Good one. His statutes, his judgments unto Israel. Unto who? Unto Israel. Unto everybody. Unto Israel. Good one. He had not deal so with any nation. He had not what? He had not deal so with any nation. Read that again. He had not deal so with any nation. Now, why is God saying he have not? He's not dealing with no other nation but Israel. Why is that in the Bible? Certainly wasn't. So, so you saying God at that time he was changed. only did? So you saying God changed? God changed. God, God God's revelation that. is progressive. No, so you saying you what you saying is God changed at one point in time. He had the Israelites. Then it changed. Now he dealing with everybody. Saying at that point in time, God was only dealing with the Israelites, but His plan of of salvation was always meant for the entire world. And, and, and Vincent, the law has long because. You are OG. You've been up here multiple times, but at the time of you being up here, you never did. You never proved that. No. And when you did bring it out, it was always I've, this proven tried, with the word. I've tried to, haven't I? I've sure. really tried to show you where it says it in this book, and I've got something that I'd like to get to if we're done with this conversation. All right, go ahead. ahead. You you didn't. You, didn't say you still didn't Genesis break 12. down. Okay, you I'll, still didn't break down. We can do Genesis 12, 24, and then I, I already know where you're going. All, all nations shall the seed of Abraham be blessed. I already know where you're going, okay. Vincent. And then can we go to Ephesians 2 then? Bring it up. Pull to, it up. To really dig at this? Hey, okay. hey, go, go to it. And I want to stay right here. I don't want to go flipping passage to passage trying to take this out of this context. Okay? Well, we, all, all I'm going to say is you can bring that up, but we have to go through the okay. precepts. I want you to do good hermeneutics with me. All right? <sighs> All right, that's all I ask. Because any, anybody can twist the word. I just ask for consistency anybody here. I'm just, right, bring it I'm just gonna read it. Therefore, remember that formerly you who are Gentiles by birth and called uncircumcised by those who call themselves the circumcision, which is done in the body by human hands, remember that at that time you were separate from Christ, excluded from citizenship in Israel, and foreigners Ooh. to the covenants of the promise without hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made the, the two groups one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility, by setting aside in his flesh the law with its commands and reg regulations, his purpose was to create in himself one new humanity of the two, thus making peace and in the one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross, by which he put to death their hostility. He came and preached peace to you who were far away, and peace to those who were near, for through him we both have access to the Father by one spirit. Who is he writing to in the, in the book of Ephesians? That's, that's, that's a good question. Church, Let's go to it. The church in Ephesians Ephesus, chapter at? 1 and verse 1. Bring it out! Paul! Now, absolutely, he wrote that to the church of Estes, but... What group of people in the church of Ephesus? It pacifies. Now, it's a lot of people, realistically, during this time, a lot of people was dealing, was dwelling in the uh, city of Ephesus. It was a hot spot. A lot of people would go there, they would worship Diana of Ephesus, the idol, etc. But Paul pacifies in his letter who he's writing to. Paul. Ephesians 1 and verse number 7. Ephesians, Ephesians 1 and 1. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints. To the who? To, to the, the saints. saints. To the who? To, to the, the saints. saints. Read on. Which are at Ephesus so, and to the faithful. So, yes, Paul is writing this to the, Ephes to the people in Ephesus. He's writing it to the saints in Ephesus. So, if he's writing this to the saints in Ephesus, is this epistle for everybody else in Ephesus or only the saints? He's writing it to the church in Ephesus. Are you seriously going to try to tell who, who's, are you going who's to, the church no are you going to try to tell me that the people in ephesus were not 99 percent greek not everybody in ephesus was greek 99 percent of people in ephesus 99 percent 99 percent of know, people in ephesus wasn't and greek can, and we can confirm this by verse 11 well hold on who are the 
Gentiles by birth. Not, I'm, I'm gonna, not, I not promise you, I'm, I'm going to explain not that not verse. The Northern Kingdom, brother. I'm, no, I'm not Gentiles saying it. I'm not birth. saying it. Northern Kingdom. I'm not well, saying then, Northern Kingdom. I don't know Kingdom. how you get around this. I'm finna break it down. But right, for, in order to understand that, you have to understand who is this. We went over this last time. Who are the saints? They're the believers. They're the ones who have been set apart. What is the, is the Bible going to say what you're going to say? What you just said? Yeah, what, what made Abraham righteous? Hold Hebrews. on, you ask it. We want to deal with his. We're going to deal with that. It's the same Friend, thing. Don't go to Who are the saints? Deal with this, te go deal with this text, please. Yeah, this is going to Psalms That's chapter 55. This is exactly what no, I we, have. No, we, we got to go through the precepts. All what right. do you mean? No, no, All right. Bring right. this out. Psalms chapter 50 and verse 5. Gather my saints together unto me. Do what? Gather my saints together unto me. Now, it's, the Lord is saying, gather my saints together unto me. It's going to clarify who are the saints. Those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. What people made a covenant with God by sacrifice? So who are the saints? Do you, do you see he can't the, get around it. See, he can't get around the, it. Do you, do you understand see that? The, well, the do you see covenant. the Let's difference? The first do you see the difference? Who he don't want He not. You're not getting Friends, it. Friends, we're talking about that old covenant, and now in in the book of Ephesians, it's a new covenant. Let's go a to new the covenant has been brought in. Do you see that? The new covenant has not been brought you, in yet. We, Let's go to Ephesians two and eleven. Let's break it down. What it's talking about? The book of Ephesians, chapter two and verse number eleven. Look it out. Wherefore, remember that ye, so that ye beginning in time past, Gentiles in the flesh. Now, Paul is telling Ephesians, you were Gentiles in time past. Right. What is a Gentile, according to y'all understanding? A non-Jew. A non-Jew. So how can you be a non-Jew anymore? Now you're, now you are a Jew. By nature, you were a wild olive tree. But so God has uh, grafted you into the natural olive tree. How you graft? You can't be grafted in a some that you're not born. Wait, wait, wait. Is God, a Jew a physical bloodline? God can't call you whatever He wants to call you. No, that's not the point. What it's saying is a Jew a physical bloodline. Yeah, but so I'm, if it's a I physical say, bloodline, I would say I'm Jewish by adoption. No, hold on, no, no, no. You, you can't see. That's the thing. That's Jewish. Romans. That's the book of Romans. What does the word ish mean? The suffix. Ish, what does that mean? Of a kind? I'm not sure. No, it means to pertain to or to be like. Of a kind. So if I say you're childish, are you a child? Are you a child? No. I'm you're acting child. like a child though, right? No. Yeah, no. I would, say, I would say I'm a child of God. No, if I say you're childish, are you actually a child or are you acting like a child? Right. Right. If I right. If I say that you're boy ish, are you a boy? No, you act. You might be acting like a boy. If I say you're Jewish, are you a Jew? No, you're acting like one. Right. So just because you follow the customs and try to follow the so-called laws of the ancient Israelites, that does not make you physically an Israelite by blood and by flesh. So it's impossible for you to be a Gentile. In the flesh, now you're not anymore. What that's saying is, has no power outside of Christ. you don't know what that's talking about. Yeah. What that's saying is in Ephesians 2, those people at the church of Ephesus, they were Gentiles through their mind and through their works of worshiping other gods. They were acting like the Gentiles. You have something called the Israelite Gentile, which I don't believe y'all familiar with. But y'all need to go into history and study that because that's an actual thing. Even the scholars agree with that. So it's saying you used to be in time past a Gentile in the flesh, we don't Who were called uncircumcision? Because you was called uncircumcised. Now is that literal? Is that is that spiritual? That's physical too. So how is that how is that the Gentile is not physical, but the circumcision is physical? Because the circumcision in the new covenant is in the heart. It's not it's not so practical. So it, so it's not physical. So you just so you so you don't know. Look, that's the old covenant. No, you didn't answer this question. So is it physical or is it spiritual? In Ephesians 2? Yes. It is a spiritual circumcision of the heart. So you're saying the Gentile is spiritual and that's spiritual. And the circumcision is spiritual. He don't read this. Hang on, hang on, hang on. 
I'm trying to. Where Paul remember that he being in time past Gentiles in the flesh. Meaning you used to act like Gentiles in the flesh. Read on. Who are called circumcision by that which is called the. Sorry, who are called the uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. Because what? There was a title used in the New Testament. The uncircumcision represents the Jews. That wasn't keeping any laws or didn't know about the Mosai. That's why the circumcision was a title for the Jews who knew they were who they knew they were Israelites and they was keeping the commandments and knew their heritage. Right. That's why you hear in certain instances in the New Testament, Paul went to the circumcision. Paul went to the uncircumcision. Well, Paul went to the uncircumcision. Peter went to the circumcision. Those are different titles, especially if you look that up in the Greek. In those words, it gives you the definition of how it's used. All right. Read on. It says that at the time you were without Christ. Because they was without Christ. They didn't know who God was. They didn't know who the Lord was. Read on. Being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having and no hope and without God in the world. Meaning they were estranged. An alien or a stranger is not just another nation all the time. Right. You could be an alien if you're... If, where are you from? Michigan. You're from Michigan. So when you come to Chicago, you're now a stranger or an alien. No. Why? Because you're not familiar. What do you mean, no? I'm still American. Hey, hey we, had a, we had a pastor who grew up in Japan. Now, he wasn't born in Japan, and he's a white guy. And his first, the, one of the first Japanese words he, words he learned was gaijin. It literally means outside person. And there's a legal ID he had over there that described him as an alien. He wasn't born in that country. He was not of their people. Right. So I that's was born. The, I was born in America. So I'm American. I'm not. I'm not an alien in any of these cities. So, so that, if I went to Canada or Mexico, you I are could be, an alien, in or a sojourner, or even a the, sojourner. The point is, these Israelites were alienated. They were not familiar with the Most High God. Why? Because their forefathers departed from God by not following. Which are the Israelites by not following their laws? We've seen that over and over again. So, so in Ephesians 2 and 11, those are talking about Israelite Gentiles, Israelites who were living like the Gentiles, but now they're grafted back in. That's what it's talking about. Right. Not other nations being grafted in. Why does, why does he talk about uh, talking to the Jewish people? He says, if they were wild olive trees by nature and grafted into the natural olive tree, how much, oh, this is talking about the jealousy of the Gentiles towards the Jewish people. Right. We're going to break that down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... He was, talking, he was talking again to the Jewish people saying if they were grafted in, or he's talking to uh, the jealous Gentiles of the Jewish people. He's saying right. if you, by nature, a wild olive tree, were grafted into the natural olive tree, then how much more can the natural olive tree be grafted back in? Now because what, they were cut off, separated. Why were they cut off? Because they turned away from the Lord. No, not necessarily because they still knew they were Jews. That is because those Jews that knew they were Jews didn't believe in Christ. That's why when Christ came onto the scene, the scribes and the Pharisees, yeah, they were Jewish by nature, but they rejected Christ. They didn't believe he was the son of God. The Pharisees were evil men. Absolutely. So although the Pharisees were evil, guess what? They still have a chance to be grafted in because you fell away and you could be grafted in. Hey, uh, whatever evil you've committed or whatever evil has happened to you, What's that going to matter after 10,000 years of paradise? 50,000 years from now, how much pain are we going to feel from our life here on earth? Well, you're not going to make, you're, gonna, you're not getting the kingdom. Right. right. So I mean, I mean, you can say that, but God doesn't say that. You're not getting it. Who is the kingdom of heaven for? It's for everyone who believes. Romans let's go to Micah 4 and 8. Romans 10, 9 and 10. Let's listen to this one first. Romans 10, 9 and 10 says. He went there last time. This, this doesn't exclude anybody. There's no exclusion in the context of the book of Romans. It's for all people. No, like no, no, people it's written, no, it's written to the saints which are at Rome. Do you see the error that you're making that then makes every other interpretation of yours an error? Yeah, yeah. How is, you, how is that an error? Went, I just broke it down. Because you went to the book of Psalms where they were, where the Israelites were called saints. 
And now in that old covenant, you are correct. But in the new covenant, that has a totally new meaning. Who is the new covenant still for? The new covenant is for Israel, but it is also for all nations. What Bible because, verse says that? And because you have... I need you to pull it up, Vincent. I don't, I want, want, I don't, I don't you, want to hear your words. I just want to show you your error. Just no, pull your up what you just said. Read, I, I want to hear the Bible. Can I, can I explain myself? Go ahead. You are in error because you assume that saint only means Israelite because you go back to one part in the Psalms that says it and now every other interpretation of yours has to fit that agenda. Can I explain? You're unwilling to look past it because of your because of your preconceptions and your commitment to this belief. No, can I explain? You're unwilling to see it. Can I explain? And I'm asking you to look at it one time. Can I explain? Yes. The word saint doesn't mean Israelite. The word saint actually means consecrated or holy ones. Amen. The holy ones are who? The Israelites. Yes. Because in the law, it tells them that they have to be holy. So when you go through the precepts, not just Psalms 50 and 5, Psalms 148 and 1, Wisdom of Solomon uh, uh, 18 and 1. These different... Well, that's why you don't understand the Bible because you doesn't you don't go precept upon precept. How the Book of Isaiah tells you to go. Right. I cannot read the Book of Ephesians through the through the lens of Psalms. I can't. What? I can't look at the Book of Ephesians and say, oh, but Psalms says this, so I have to look at it through this lens. No, you have I to look at it through the lens of the Book of Ephesians. Let's bring this out. What it's we going? It's the Book of Micah, chapter four and verse eight. No. And thou, O Tyra of the flock, the stronghold of the daughter of Zion, unto thee shall it come, even the first dominion, the kingdom shall come to the daughter of Jerusalem. The what? The daughter of Jerusalem. Read that again. The daughter of Jerusalem. So the kingdom is only coming to the Israelites, not for all nations. The kingdom of heaven is only for the children of Israel. Right. Y'all will be in the kingdom of heaven, but y'all will be servants unto Christ. Right. And not servants as as to what y'all think. Will you not serve him? I'm gonna be in servitude until him. But you're gonna be in hardcore bondage. Slave. You're gonna be absolutely you're gonna be a slave unto Christ. Well, okay, so Jacob, he's the one who got renamed Israel. What does Israel mean? It means prince out of power. Or he oh, has power no. with God. No. Yasha Allah. What do you mean no? It means one who wrestles with God or one who contends with God. That's the same. It's literally one that has power with God or prince of the power. No. Uh -uh. What is that word? What is that? What is that word in a Hebrew for the word angel? Because you know that angel is called a god, right? Hebrew. I don't know the Hebrew. I know the. I know the Greek. Well, you can't. That's that's why your understanding is all jacked up. That angel he was wrestling with is a power, and that power and that word Hebrew word for the word power power is Alahayim or the powers which could be the angels. So when it says Jacob wrestled an angel, that's why you hear certain people say Jacob wrestled a God, but Jacob wrestled a power. Now that angel is a God. Is it the most high God? No, but it's a power. The children of Israel are called gods. So what's your point? Wait, is that Psalm 82? Absolutely. Oh, where, hang on, where, where is that used? What's this? What's the setting for Psalm 82? I believe it's the heavenly courts. What's your point? Well, he wasn't talking to men when he called them gods. Who was he talking to? The children of God from Jake or from the book of Job when Satan came among the heavenly places among the sons of God. This is bad. It's the same word. You don't have no understanding of who those gods are. You have the They're sons. People. You have the sons of God, which are the angels. And you had the sons of God, which are the children of Israel. Say no if you want to. I've never heard anyone say that before. Let's go to Job chapter 2 and 1. And let's go to Hosea chapter 1 and verse 10. Man, how long have you it's been the studying book of Job scriptures? chapter 2 verse 1. No. Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them. To present himself before the Lord. Right. Now those sons of God in this context absolutely is talking about the angels. Right. You see the same instance in Daniel the third chapter, 3 and 25. Now let's go to 1 Corinthians 15 and 39. So in one instance, the sons of God 
can be talking about the angels. Then we're going to show you in another instance where the sons of God is actually talking about the children of Israel. Or well, you also had the patriarchs was the son of God. You know, Noah was a son of God, right? Adam, he was a son of God. These are the sons of God, but yet they're not angels. Read this. It's the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 9. 1 Corinthians 15 and 39. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 39. Bring it out. All flesh is not the same flesh. It says what? All flesh is not the same flesh. Read on. But there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, another of birds. There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. So you have celestial bodies, you have terrestrial bodies. We have terrestrial bodies. Angels have celestial bodies. That are not flesh. That are not flesh. So let's go to Hosea 1 and 10, and let's go to Luke chapter 3 and 37. Hosea 1 and 10. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that we're in, that we're in the place where it is said unto them, Ye are not my people. There it shall be said unto them, Ye are the sons of the living God. Ye are the what? Ye are the sons of the living God. Why are the Israelites? Ye are the sons of the living God. So are the Israelites the sons of God as well? I would have to study more of that whole passage. See that? Hey, hey, the reason you I, had some? Hey, hey, the reason I can't. All right, what scripture? All right, let's go to it. Jeremiah 31 and 31. Hey, can we pause real quick, though? No, because you already going to do different plates. I know how much you study. I, I'm fascinated right now. What do you mean you're fascinated? I am having fun. This is what I love looking into the truth, into God's word. And, like, I know we disagree a lot, but, like, I'm interested to know how long you study because you've got all these passages by memory, and I, I'm going to strive to be this knowledgeable. Well, you can't do that. Because knowledge is only for the children of Israel. Hey. Wisdom is only for... So you hey. you would never be... What, is, what does Romans 8 say? There is therefore now no condemnation. Okay? You don't know what that's talking you're, about. You're condemning me right now. How am I and you're going against this, God's man. word What's when the you book say of that? Uh, Jeremiah chapter 31 and verse 31. Yeah. Behold, the days come, see of the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. That according to the covenant that I made with their fathers, and the and the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was a husband unto them, saith the Lord. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my laws in their inner parts, and write them in their hearts, and will be their God. And they shall be my people. So the new covenant, old covenant for the Israelites, only new covenant for the Israelites, oh. only. Oh. Right. What about the covenant with Abraham? That wasn't even to Israel. That was just to Abraham and his descendants. That was just to. What covenant are you talking about? Where he says that he will bless his seed. Go into the land that I will show you. And he was he was counted righteous by faith. For one, that wasn't a covenant. For one. What about his dream? That was a promise. What about covenant? He, he no. kills the animals and walks through it. God that was in he Genesis is. chapter 15. Yeah, that yes. was to Abraham. That was right, God. you're you're talking about Genesis chapter 12. Two it's, totally it's, different it's, accounts. No, no, same story. No, it's, it's not. not. It's, it's two Abraham. accounts. It's the same Abraham. Do you have to pull it up? No. So then don't talk about it. If you don't got it, we, from now on, if you don't got it, don't talk about it. Right. Right? right. Hey, now. This is the most studied object on earth. Well, you haven't studied it. It's the oh, only right. source of information that doesn't lie. Well, you're lying. Right. So, I wouldn't speak if I was I, well, might, I might well, speak out you of You lied ignorance. up here several times. I might speak out of ignorance because I'm still learning. Well, that means you should just hold your hand upon your mouth and let Vincent do the talk. Right. He knows more than me, I promise. Well, it, it don't seem like it. Right. It don't seem like it. I will and, make you into a great nation. And I will bless you and I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. That right. seems why that seems wide reaching, doesn't it? And I agree. What is that I talking agree. about? No, no. I, let me finish. I right, agree that those covenants were given to the Israel people. 
because those were God's chosen people. But the promise to Abraham is much wider reaching than that. For a time it was for the Israelites, and he didn't, he didn't send a prophet to the Canaanites. He didn't send a prophet to the Hittites. He had a chosen people out of the goodness of his love, but the plan all along was to bless all the nations of the earth. And that is what the Messiah did. You know Genesis 3. He said that, that one was going to crush the serpent on the head for all people, for all of Adam and Eve's people. It don't say for all people all, in Genesis chapter 3. I know it doesn't, but so can you look at that for Eve, me? Eve is called the mother of all that are living. Hold on, can I finish? I, well, Y'all are, are bringing up good points, but we have to do one thing at a time. Okay. Let me break Go down ahead. that. And, and I got something for you. I got something for you after you just said that. Let's go to Genesis chapter 12, verse 3. So you have to know what that's talking about. You just read over verses 1, 2, 3, automatically skip the 4, out of all nations of the earth shall be blessed. No, through them. Verses 2, 3, and 4. But you didn't, you, didn't, you didn't expound on them. You didn't receive the understanding. Because I didn't have to. It's that clear. It's the book of Genesis chapter 12, verse 3. No. And I will bless them that bless thee. That means what? The Lord is going to bless the people that bless the Israelites, ultimately. Read on. And curse him that curses thee. How? It's talking about the Israelites. It's talking, it's talking, no, talking no, it's about The reason why I'm saying it's talking can I, can I, and that's the point. It's talking about the Israelites because through Abraham came the descendants of the Israelites. Okay. Because you can say, well, hold on. That's talking about Esau. The reason why it's not talking about Esau because it's a Pacific bloodline. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Not Abraham, Ishmael and so and so or Abraham, Isaac, and Esau. No, it's Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Right. Now it said, I will bless them that bless thee, read on. And curse him that curses thee. And what? And curse him that curses thee. So what happened to the what's gonna happen to the people that cursed the Israelites? They were destroyed. Now what happens to them that so if they're destroyed, how are they gonna be blessed? How, what do you mean? What See, are you trying so to say? My, my point it. is, it's impossible to be blessed if you're cursed. Okay. So if they curse the Israelites, with, which every nation did, how are they going to be blessed? But you just said something. I got to take it to Christ. I'm, that, I'm not following. I'm sorry. You're not, not getting it? No. All right, say let's, it again. All right. It, it, let me read this again. What's up? <laughs> it's the book of Genesis, chapter 12. Verse 3. No. And I will bless them that bless thee. Right. And curse him that curseth thee. Right. And in and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Right? So in him shall all families of the earth be blessed. What is that talking about? He's got it. <laughs> See, you can't answer it. This, this He's is it. clearly this is got it. something that, that's better than what do you what have I to bring that? What do you have to say? Why do you think we're out here tonight? I don't know why y'all out here tonight. All right. Right. I'm out here because I love you. You don't know what... You can't love me. Sucks. Yeah. I, the reason I love you is because I understand from Psalm 139 that God formed you in your mother's womb. What? What? Yes. what you, you were knit together in the secret places by the No, hand you of have God. to love your neighbor. Right. You're not my neighbor according the to the Bible. The whole planet Earth is your neighbor. We live very Let's go to Leviticus 19 and 17. So are people in China your neighbor? Amen, yes. No, they they're not. The same earth. According to the definition of neighbor, it's impossible for people to be in China your neighbor because a neighbor is somebody that's close by. What's the, right. what's the, what's the point of the parable of the Good Samaritan? <sighs> Let's bring this up. It's the book of Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 17. No. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. Right. And not suffer sin upon him. Read on. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. Against the what? Against the children of thy people. That means the what? Your neighbors are the children of your people. Right. So if how is all, everybody your neighbor? Because if we're all from Adam and Eve, then we're all from Noah after the flood. Second address six and fifty-four. That ain't even God's word. Bring out the what? Bring this out, man. Bring out the shotgun. The book of 2nd Edges, chapter 6, and verse number 54. Bring it out. And it reads, And after these, and after these, Adam also, whom thou 
made us more of all thy creatures. Of him come we all. Right, we all come from Adam, right? Well, and, Noah, Noah, and then hence from Noah. Right, we all come from Adam and Eve, right? Yep. That's why she's called the mother of all living. All living. Why? Because everybody comes from her. Right. Everybody right. comes from Adam. Read on. And the people also whom thou hast chosen. And the chosen people of God also come from Adam too. Right. Read on. All this have I spoken before thee, O Lord, because thou madest the world for our sakes. Right. As for the other people. As for the who? As, as for the God. other people. Read that again. As, as for, for the, the other people. people. Who are the other people that it's talking about? The unchosen. Oh, that's right. The well, people that. The on, people well, that I said that. I said that. But here, here's the funny thing about it. I believe in double predestination. No, hold on, hold Second on. Timothy. Before Second we Timothy. go to that, hold on. Before we go to that. It says also from the people that uh, the other people is talking about the non-Israelites. So if God, on. if God chooses a people for his own possession, he also chooses people who are not his possession. What? No, he doesn't. He chose them for destruction. Read this part again. He chose them for destruction. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Right. And you're going right. to be one of those people, man. Right. Read this out. Oh, this is what I spoke before thee, oh Lord. Because thou made us the world for our sakes. As for the other people, right, the non-Israelites, which also come of Adam, they come because they come from Adam too. Read on. Thou hast said that they are nothing. It says what? Thou hast said that they are nothing. Read that again. Thou hast said that they are nothing. Read on. But be like unto spittle. But be what? But be like unto spittle. Read on. And has likened the abundance of them with a drop that falleth from a vessel. So according, so according to the Bible, the other people that come from Adam, yeah, they come from Adam and Eve, but God has a chosen people. The rest of the people, they like spit or one drop that falls from a bucket. So what is, what is the proof from God's word that you are a chosen people from him? Like what is, what, from the new covenant, the new testament under Christ Jesus, what is it that proves you are his child? You said from the new testament? Well, we have to go to the Old Testament. The so reason it's, it's why, the because God. it's the same God. It's the same God. So His revelation is progressive. He gives it to us in little bits so that we can understand it and that He can have His way in history, right? Because it's His story. It's not our story. It's His story, All right? So we have to go to the most recent thing that God says to make it. You know, we don't we don't look at the New Testament in light of the Old Testament. And you can look at the Old Testament in light of the New Testament, but that's not great either. Yes, well, hold on. You have to go to the Old Testament because during the time of the apostles and the people in the New Testament, there was no such thing as the New Testament. Right. right. All they had was the Old Testament. So a lot of the stuff that they're quoting, they're quoting what? Prophecies in the Old Testament. Jesus believed it all. Absolutely. Now, with that being said, it's certain prophecies in the Old Testament that has not came to pass yet. So that's why we have to go to the Old Testament. It shows that these people on this sign right here are indeed the biblical Israelites, which is the question that you're asking, right? How do we know? That's the best uh, question you could have asked in your whole life. That's right. Go to verse Deuteronomy 28, there's 68. There's two answers. There's two answers. We're going to show you why. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 68. Now, do you know what Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, is going into? Blessing and curses. To who? Obedience and disobedience. To who? The Israelites. Absolutely. So if the Israelites do not do these commandments, they will be cursed. Ouch. If they do, how can they be they blessed? They will be blessed. And cursed, because judges goes back and forth from curse to blessed, curse to blessed, curse to blessed. Well, if they keep the commandments, they're gonna be blessed. If they don't, they're gonna be cursed. Right. So you made a comment earlier that says, How can you be blessed and cursed through obedience or disobedience? No, that was right. That's talking about the Israelites in this context. So if you keep the commandments, you're blessed. The moment you stop, immediately you're going to be cursed. What's the new commandment? To love one another as I have loved you. And the, Israel, this, and the, Israelites, and the Israelites didn't keep that. So therefore they're cursed. That's how we know we Israel. Bring this out. It's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 68. Yeah. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. And did the Israelites ever go back into Egypt after they came out of Egypt? Jesus did. I'm talking about the Israelites as a nation. 
Did no, they ever no, go they back? No, they didn't. They when went they to the promised land. They were, they were liberated. Absolutely. They went through the wilderness into the land of Canaan. Right. You know what? And even Egypt was a sanctuary for them. When they and the there. Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. With what? With ships. With what? With ships. What nation of people went to slavery on ships? No, I'm saying, I'm asking you, what race of people went to slavery on ships? All races of people. All races went to... Every race of people have been slaves throughout history. On ships? Yeah. When? When has other races been on slavery on ships? It has always been that way. When? Since the flood. Okay, I don't know when slavery started after the flood. Neither do you. You don't know when slavery started after the flood? This, I'm talking about slavery on cargo slave ships. I mean, I know what you're talking about. When did a when did another when did the white race get put on ships, brought to another land, get taken off those ships, right. and put chains on them? Ooh. When Rome was in power. No. Across the Mediterranean Sea, no. that happened a lot. No. We we've done conclusive research. No other race but the Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, which are the only race to go on slavery on slave ships. This is how we know we are the Israelites indeed. And you will be a, y'all are Edomites. So y'all not Israelites, but y'all have a biblical nationality as well. Why does Paul take no pleasure in that in Philippians 3? Vincent, all of these points you bring it out from well, I'm just Three, wondering. Two months he said, ago, he went out the same yes, place we already and tackled. And he never gave a sufficient answer to yes, any of them. We those. broke it down through the spirit. No, right? No. Paul said in Romans 11 and 1, I am an Israelite from the seed of Abraham from the tribe of Benjamin. Yeah, absolutely is. But he also says he counts that all for loss for the uh, sake uh, of We're not dealing right. with these same points anymore. Well, we already tackled them. We, do you have anything new? Brother, because I want you to see them and hear them, and I'm gonna come back every time. And, and you're gonna, gonna be disproved. And you're gonna and be disproven with the word of God every single time, Vincent. Every time, every time I will pray that it shines into your. And soul. God is not hearing your prayers, Vincent. Oh. He's not hearing your prayers, Vincent. What question do you have? What is the most arrogant thing a man can do? We not see. We're not answering questions. If it's not biblical questions, we're not answering. God is the answer to this question. What's the your most, point? The most arrogant thing a man can do is to believe that he knows better than God. What's your point? That's what you guys are claiming right now. How are we saying we know more than God? Because you say that I'm condemned. God you says you are that, condemned. Romans eight doesn't say that. Who is the Romans written to? Not Jewish people. Let's go to let's go to the book of Romans one and seven. Certainly not Jewish. And let's go to Psalms chapter one forty eight and verse one. Y'all wasting you had a point? Y'all y'all wasting y'all time up here. Y'all y'all gonna keep losing. You're gonna keep getting cut up with the word until you give up the ghost one day. Again, already, now brother. what's his name? What's his name? Edward. Edward. Who are the saints? Because he doesn't know. Who are the saints? The holy ones. Who are the holy ones? The ones that God calls out of darkness and places in His marvelous light. According to what scripture? Read up. Uh, Read this. <laughs> Call to be saints, grace and peace from God our Father. And from the Lord, you have a shot much. Yeah. See, you got to look it up. Read this. We know who it is. You don't got to go to Google for the answer. We're going to go into the Bible for the answer. Right. Bring this up. It's the book of Psalms, chapter 148, verse 1. No. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Jump verse 14. Verse 14. No. He also exalted the horn of his people. The praise of all his saints. The what? The praise the of all his saints. Read the one. Even of the children of Israel. Even what? Even of the children of Israel. Who are the saints? Even of the children of Israel. That's another witness. The Israelites are the saints. Right. Wisdom of Solomon 18 and 1. The book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 18 and verse 1. Yeah. Nevertheless, thy saints have a very great light. Thy what? Thy saints have a very great light. Read that again. Thy saints have a very great light. What people had a very great light? in the land of Egypt.
he's a doing a ten plagues. So who are the saints? <laughs> so who are the saints? Whoever God calls. What scripture? You're only willing to look at it through the context no, of those up, verses. No, pull up, up agenda, the scripture. Pull up the scripture. Pull up the scripture. I'm trying to rebuke you. Pull up the scripture. You can't rebuke us. Here we go. Here we go. First Peter. First Peter. Chapter two. Living stone and a holy people. Uh, starting in verse nine. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for His own possession. Exodus thirteen and six. This, this the book of Exodus. Who is that talking about? So, you. What is Peter quoting? And in 1 Peter 2 and 9. <laughs> to those who are elect exiles in the disparation in Pontius and Galatians and Cappadocia. Who are they, who are they elect? <laughs> Bring this out. Let's see, what, let's see what Peter is quoting. This is a shame. And what Bible Institute? Y'all go to the Moody still? Yeah. Why are you still at the Moody, Vincent? Right. Why am I still there? Why do you still go to the so, Moody Institution? You know we're all at different stages in life. Not Read everyone this. is on the same plane. Bring us up. It's the book of Exodus, chapter 10, verse 23. Oh. They saw not what? Exodus 13 to 6. Exodus 13 to 6. It's the book of Exodus, chapter 13 to 6. Oh. Seven days thou shalt eat unleavened bread, and the seventh day shall be a feast to the Lord. Exodus 19 to 6. This is the book of Exodus chapter 19 and verse 6. Yeah. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a an holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. So what Peter is quoting is quoting Exodus 19 and 6, which was talking to the Israelites that they are a holy nation, a kingdom of a kings and priests. So everything that you call it goes back to the Israelites. But you don't understand that because the Lord, because you're a heathen. I mean, right. You're a heathen. That's right. Don't talk about Christ while you're up here. All right. So Paul, in talking about Jesus, said to his Jewish brethren, "You can't think. You don't have that. Just I mean, give it up." I'm just. Oh. I'm trying to figure out what's most important right now, and the most important thing that God came to prove is love. What is love? Love is to care about someone more than you care about yourself. Is that in the Bible? Yeah, Jesus came and died for us. He didn't, who did Christ die for? The sins of the whole world. Are you sure? I'm sure that God was powerful enough to assuage his own wrath. Let's see if you're a liar. Matthew 15 and 28. This is the book of Matthew. Chapter 15. Matthew 15, 24. Say, this the, this the book of Matthew, chapter 15, and verse 24. Oh. You're bringing up the same points. And I've just proven this one. But he answered and said, I am not sick. I am what? I, I am not, not sick. What did Christ say? I, I am not sick. sick. Read that again. I, I am not sick. sick. Read on. But unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But unto everybody. But unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. What did Christ say? But unto the Lord sheep of the house of Israel. Who was Christ sent to? He was sent to his people. And they no, I'm talking, about, I'm talking to Edward. Yeah, yeah. Who did Christ come for? Right. He was sent to his own people and they rejected him. And they rejected him. Did everybody reject him? No, they didn't. So how many, re can how I many show, accepted him though? Can I show you? Uh, uh, you had Jews that believed on him. Matthew can 5 though, right? You had Matthew Nicodemus. Nicodemus was a Jew, but he believed on Christ. Can I show you we, something? We can hope that he Wait, did. before we, we go to know. that, he's trying to escape this. No, no, no. Who did Christ come for? According to that scripture we just read. If you think... Can you answer that, the question? If you think yes, from that scripture, it was only you have the Israelites. To, you have to answer. What did he say? <laughs> what did he say? Jesus Christ. What did Christ... It's not my words. This is red letter. What did Christ say? Testify to his own people about his own coming. Let's see if testify is in his verse. It's the book of Matthew, chapter 15, verse 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Who's he talking to right there? He's talking to the woman of Canaan. And what happened? 
Let's start at verse. He fed her. And he, he fed blessed her. And blessed her. He blessed her. Right there at the table. Wait, let's start at verse number twenty-one. Verse twenty-one. Then Jesus went this and departed into the coast of Tyre and and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. Right. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. And what did Christ say? But he answered her not a word. But he what? But he answered her not a word. Why didn't Christ answer this woman? He did. No, hold on. He did. Why did, no, why did Christ did not just answer this woman a word? Because he, you're not reading the whole passage. Do you He's not reading we, the whole Bible. We're going to read that next passage. Read it then. The question is, before we get to that, why did Christ ignore this woman the first time? Hmm. To prove a point to the Jewish people he was sitting with. No. He, he was, was sitting with his disciples. What do you mean? The Jewish people, right? You're just making up stuff out no, of no, your no, own no. belly. His disciples were read on. So Christ ignored this woman. And his disciples came and besought him. Saying, send her away. Why did the disciples say send her away? Because they were racist. <laughs> She's a Canaanite woman. They hated her. Hey, that's the most honest statement somebody can say. Right. Absolutely, they were racist, man. Right. Right. The apostles knew that Christ was only for the Israelites. That's right. now, now read the whole passage. Read They're, not done. They're not done yet. For she cried away. So he said, cry to put on. You can't get away with that one. He, you, so you calling Peter the apostle a racist? That's crazy. The, you call him a racist? The 144,000? Wow. So Christ will roll with racists. Hang on, hang on. Can you I can't make look, this up. Look at this. Look Read this. on. Race isn't real. Ethnicity okay. and culture. We is. saw him saying to her way, for she cried after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now, if Christ is so this wonderful son of God, why would the son of God say something like that to a woman? He ignored her the first time. The disciples said, send this woman away. Then he told the woman, hey, I'm not sent to you. I'm only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So why won't you read the whole passage? We just read it. No, you're not. You're halfway through it. Read one. <laughs> Verse 25. Then came she and worshiped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, it is not meant to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. And what? And, and cast, cast it to dogs. dogs. So so it. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Before we keep going on, more, more. did Jesus Christ just call this woman a dog? Yeah. And you agree with that? Listen. Say no if you want to. Listen. Keep going. There's two more verses. Did Christ call this woman a dog? Two more verses. Can you answer the question? Then we're going to move on. Did Christ call this woman a dog? The Lord God can call anybody anything he wants. But according to you, Christ loves everybody. He does. So, so hold message. on. So Christ is going to call a woman that he loves a dog? Yeah, listen. Read the rest. Read the rest. We're done here. No, no. Finish the passage. Just go home. Don't be Edward. a coward. Finish the passage. Edward, just go home. Finish the passage. Edward, you're not making sense. No, you were the you're being, you're being, you're embarrassing yourself. All right, all right, all right. Because you're gonna Read edit on. this video. You're gonna edit this video and make yourself look good. First, I edited yeah. nothing. It's, it's raw. Raw. It's raw. It's uncut. Finish, finish. Read on. The past. Verse twenty-seven. No. And she said, "True, Lord. Yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table." Then Jesus answered and said unto her, "O woman, great is thy faith." Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And what was her what, what, and what and was her, her request? And her daughter was healed. Was she healed? La uh. What was wrong with her? What do you mean? What was wrong with her? It says a woman of Canaan. So this woman, she was a heathen. When you go into it, she was a Syrophoenician, a Canaanite. But it doesn't give the nationality of her daughter. So her daughter could have been a what? An Israelite. That's right. Seeing by the man she would have dealt hey, with. If her mom is a Canaanite, what does that make her? A Canaanite. All right. Because we don't know who her father was. Or right. her husband. Right. So we don't know. Yeah. Until her father's made manifest, 
We can't say that this is a heathen but woman. But did not Jesus bless her right there? And Jesus answered her, oh woman. He blessed the daughter. He, he blessed her a daughter. First, first and foremost, he sent her away. He called her a dog. He wasn't there with her. Not only that, he told her, I am not sent but to lost you with Israel. She was cleaving to him, begging him like a servant. Slave. And guess what? Like a slave. And Christ said, be it far from the woman. Guess what? You have your quest to done. How is she going to get salvation? How is that saying she's going to be saved in that passage? Right. It be doesn't. It, be it done to you as you desire. It doesn't. It doesn't. Nowhere in this passage does it talk about her being saved. Be it done to you for as you desire. Is Jesus, she being saved? Jesus answered all of her desires right there. Yeah, what? You add in the to hey, the word. Wait, no, no, no. It's what do you got, Vincent? These are Jesus. Surely you're Lord? better than this man, cause he don't have no understanding. Friend, friend, on, you Vincent. don't. But I do have Vincent. something. Vincent, come on, come on. You Vincent. said math, Matthew 15. Hey, I was only sent to the house of the tribe of Israel. Friend, I agree. He did only go to them. He didn't travel into some towns. He went to his people. Christ they, didn't travel into some towns. He didn't go to every town. Did Christ go to Capernaum? Yes. Yes. Is that a different town? I'm saying he didn't go to all towns. He went to specific people. Well, nobody he went, went to, to all towns. I haven't even begun my argument. I no, thought, I thought, you, we, you, you I thought we would off, agree on that. You starting off that incorrect. Well, you agree he didn't go to everywhere, did he? Did Paul go everywhere? No. So what's your point? I'm getting to it. I go just ahead. thought we could get, get go ahead, go I ahead. just thought we could agree on something before we dispute. All right, something. go ahead. He was sent to those tribes of the house of Israel. He wasn't going to the Gentiles, but the Gentiles started coming to him. And what do we know in John 6? All that the Father draws to me, I will give life. When did it Gentiles the, ever come to Christ for salvation? You, I'm showing you. Go ahead. Now there were some Greeks among those who went up to worship at the festival. They came to Philip who were... What book? John 12. You said to Christ. You and John 12, 12, John 12 and uh, what? 20. Okay, go ahead. Now there were some Greeks among those who went up to worship at the festival. They came to Philip who was from Bethsaida in Galilee with the request, Sir, they said, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went to tell Andrew. Andrew and Philip in turn told Jesus. Jesus replied, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it, if it dies, it produces many seeds. Anyone who loves their life will lose it, while anyone who hates their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Anyone. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, my servant will also be. My Father will honor the one who serves me. He saw that the people were coming to him. The he Greek, said the Greeks, right? The Greeks were Four coming to Greeks. him. Friend, let me finish. All right, go ahead. The Father was drawing the mm -hmm. Greeks unto Jesus. What was promised to Abraham and Isaiah about the nations coming to God through the Messiah, that the Messiah would gather all people, was starting to happen. And Jesus in that moment realizes, my hour has come. Now I die. Let's now now the 20. kernel falls to the ground and produces a fruit that stretches so much wider than you're willing to see. Who is he talking to? He was talking, he was answering his disciples that said, there's some Greeks that were and, and who are those Greeks? Who are those Greeks? Yes. That's not given to us there. Well, we finna explain who it is. Some that you don't, don't do because y'all don't do any scholarship at the Moody Institution. Friend, now bring this out. Friend, it's I the book of John, chapter friend. 12, verse 20. Yeah. And there were certain Greeks among them that came up to worship at the feast. At the what? At the feast. You know what? The same came therefore to Philip, which was of Bethsaida of Galilee, and desired him, saying, Sir, we will see Jesus. Right. Philip cometh, cometh, and tell us Andrew. Uh, and again, Andrew and Philip tell Jesus. And Jesus answered them, saying, the hour has come that the Son of Man shall be glorified. Now let's see who those Greeks are. Let's go to the Greek word for those Greeks. And let's go to Acts chapter 6. 
No, 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 uh, no, let me finish. Let me finish. Can I finish? I'll let you finish. I'll let you finish. Do you see it? Vincent, I'll let you finish. Now, something that you don't do, Vincent, is scholarship. Because in certain contexts in the New Testament, you have different words for Greeks. In certain contexts, for the word Greek, it could be a Greek-speaking Jew. We finna explain that. Oh, this is Greek. A Helen. Or a what? A Greek. A Helen. Or or inhabitant of, of Hellas. By extension, a Greek-speaking person. A what? A, a Greek-speaking Greek person. What are those Greeks in John 12? A Greek-speaking person. No, literal Greeks. A Greek-speaking person. So a Greek could be classified as a Greek speaking person. Right. Just for example, that Canaanite woman that he just mentioned in Matthew 15, when you read in another account in uh, Mark chapter seven, it says that she was a, a, a Macedonian. Why? Because the Greek influence not only had uh, influence over the children of Israel, but over Tyre, Zidon, the Canaanites as well. So it says a Greek speaking Jew, meaning what? That wasn't talking about other nations. Right. Of course, that's how you would see it. What does the scholarship say? Oh. You're 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 applying that de you're applying that definition to this context this for it to fit. That's your the agenda. that's the Greek word for that context. Every, right. Every so every time the word Greek is used, it means that. Or Let's go to Acts six and one. Or just when you desire for it to fit your agenda, the word Greek means that. No. Now somebody with no understanding will go there and say, "Well, yeah, that is." That's why you have to furthermore prove yeah, that that is talking, because, not just talking about uh, all other nation person. You got a point? Yeah, he said he was an Italian, right? Right. He speaks English. Right. So he's an English-speaking Italian. Absolutely. That's right. See that? I understand that that's how you wish to work around this text. But <laughs> See, he can't deal with it. He can't. He can't. He, can't, he, can't, he not. It's not even close. He not there. That's John Act 6 and 1 for Grecian. See that? This John Act 6 and 1. In the blue letter scholarship, a Hellenist, one who imitates the manners and customs or worships of the Greeks and use the Greek tongues. Hey, so hey, Vincent. Is that the same word? Hey, Vincent. Yes, it's the same word. We're just pulling it up. Well, it's actually two different words. It's Grecians, but it has the same biblical definition, usage. Now, hold on. Before we go to that, I need you to read B. Now, this I didn't make the blue letter Bible. This is the scholars. Used in the NT of Jews born in foreign lands and speaking Greek. So it's used in the New, that word is used in the New Testament of Jews in foreign lands speaking Greek. So that would be a, not, a secondary use. That's not the main use. Right. Because the, the, the first dairy use is the what? The Bible, first and foremost. Right. Secondary use, you have to have one or two primary sources. Right. And so, especially when you're doing what hermeneutics, correct? Right. See that? Okay. So here's one thing I definitely don't know. Why are you guys out here right now? Well, we not out here for you. At all. You hey, know why we out here? Let's go to Isaiah 58 and win the classic. Uh, Let's go to the book of Isaiah chapter 58 and verse 1. Bring it out. Bring it out. Bring it out. So book of Isaiah. Why, why do you think Jeremiah was out there? Prophesying. Come on. I'm saying why was he out there prophesying? Jeremiah? Yes. Why was Ezekiel out there prophesying? They, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, they were all contemporaries of one another. They all lived at the same time and prophesied the coming uh, captivity, the Babylonian captivity. Well, let's bring this up. It's the book of Isaiah, chapter 58 and verse 1. We yeah. were out there to tell Israel of their evil doings or a captivity will come about. Yeah. What we're telling these people, we're telling our people, the blacks and Spanish Native Americans, right. they have to repent, come back to the Most High God, Come back to the God of Israel, right. or they will be destroyed in the second coming of the Lord. Right. Read this up. Isaiah 58, what? Yeah. Cry aloud. Do what? Cry aloud. What the Lord said? Cry aloud. Read it again. Cry aloud. Read it on. Spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgressions, and the house of Jacob their sins. So we out here showing our people their sins, their transgressions, and telling them to come back to the Most High God. Right. right. If they're on that sign. If they're not, we tell you to get ready for captivity and get ready for destruction. When Jesus told the disciples, go get all nations, he meant just those nations. 
What is it say? Yes, he, he, no, when he said go get all nations, he's talking about the Jews that were scattered in all nations. Even though he says all authority on earth, not just all authority in this geographic. You don't area. even have a verse, all so we can't I'm refer what you're talking I'm about. Gonna, you don't, you what don't, verse? Matthew 28, 19, 18 through 20. Absolutely. So what does that mean? You're just bringing out verses, but you're not breaking it down through the precepts. He says, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go, make disciples of all nations. Why is he saying go into all nations, Vincent? He's talking about go into the world. I've conquered death and the grave for you. I've no. conquered go to James chapter and 1 and verse 1. For everybody. Now go tell everybody about me. He's saying go proclaim my kingdom. The book of no. James. You're a herald. No. This is book of James, herald, chapter 1, you don't and verse the number 1. Yeah. James, a servant of God, of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the 12 tribes. To the what? To, to the, the 12, 12 tribes. Read that again. To, to the 12, 12 tribes. tribes. Which are what? Which are scattered abroad. Which are what? Which, which are scattered abroad. Are they in one place? Which, which are scattered abroad. Why did Christ say going to all nations? Which, which are scattered abroad. abroad. Why? Because you have the Israelites scattered abroad in all nations. Please. To the four corners of the earth. Please. That's why he said that. Through the understanding. Let's go to Deuteronomy 28 and 25. Because he would never... We could bring out a thousand precepts in the Bible showing them, and he's still not going to believe. See that? Read this. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 25. Yeah. The Lord shall cause thee to be smitten before thy enemies. Thou shalt go out one way against them and flee seven ways before them. Right. And shall be removed into all kingdoms. It's a what? And shall be removed into all kingdoms. What are the Israelites going to be? And shall be removed into all kingdoms. That's why any major kingdom the Israelites were always in. The Babylonian. They was in the Babylonian Empire. It was in the Persian and Medes Empire. Right. It was in the Greek Empire. Right. It was in the Roman Empire. Right. They're going to be in the American Empire. Right. They're going to be in China. Right. They're going to be in South America. Right. They're going to damn near be in Antarctica. Right. I wouldn't be surprised if it's an Israelite in Antarctica. Right. Research scientists, yeah. Why? Because it's a God said so, that's why. Right. So. Found it. Where, where, where does your condemnation of me come from? Because if you're not an Israelite, you're gonna be the you're more likely you're gonna be destroyed in World War Three. I've been, I've been given the spirit of adoption, according to Romans eight. Who is adoption for? Who is the adoption for? Anyone who believes. Let's go to Romans nine and four. If we bring out this verse, and you don't uh, comply with it or acknowledge it. We're finished talking to y'all guys. Deal? Right. Deal? Y'all gotta walk away, all right? Deal? All right. All right. I'll come back. Then. Deal, Edward? <laughs> that depends on if it conflicts with any other part of Scripture. Read this. It's the book of Romans, chapter 9 and verse 4. No. Who are Israelites? Who are what? Who, Who are Israelites? Israelites? Let's start at verse 3. No. Let's start at verse 1. Verse 1. No. I say the truth in Christ. I, I lie not. not. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I could wish that myself were a, cur a, a curse from Christ. Right, so Paul's saying, hey, I wish I could go through what Christ went through. Read on. From Christ, for my brethren. For my who? For my brethren. For everybody. For my brethren. Read on. My kinsmen, according to the flesh, who are Israelites? Who are who? Who are Israelites? Read that again. Who are Israelites? Read on. To whom pertaineth the adoption? And to whom what? To who obtaineth the adoption? And the glory, and the covenants, and the giving of the law, and the service of God, and the promises. Whose are the fathers? And of whom, as concerning the flesh, Christ came. The mountain! Who is God over all? <laughs> how do you deal with, all. how do you break that down? Paul wishes that he could be sent to hell for the sake of his brothers. And what else? All right, because who, who, he loves his Jewish people so much. And what else? 
Because everything that God revealed about himself belongs to the Israelites first. And who is the, who is the adoption for? Then belong the, the adoption. Friend, Romans 9 and 10. No, don't let him answer. No, don't. Edward, you're not getting out of this one. You got it, Esau. Speak up. Right there. You got it, Edward. Okay, so one thing that's really bad to do is take uh, a very small piece of scripture Aww. and apply it to the Come rest on, of scripture. Edward. What did that verse just say? What did Paul, Paul said? It, that's why we, we read verse one on purpose because Paul said, hey, I'm not lying when I say this. Right. So and Paul is saying that Israelites only pertain to the, uh, the adoption only pertain to the Israelites and the covenants and the service of God and the glory, etc. on down. So I need to read the rest of chapter nine. Oh, you don't, you don't want to do that. Like the brothers, you don't, you sure you want to do that? You really want to do that, Edward. Come on, Edward. Use wisdom. Right. If we tell you you don't want to do that, there's no wisdom. You want to do that, Edward? Let's read on. God says. <laughs> Whose are the fathers and of whom as concerning the flesh Christ came. And Christ only came for the Israelites. You know what? Who is over all God blessed forever. Amen. Not as though the word of God have taken none effect. Before we read on, do you want us to keep reading on? We have to, because... Yeah, I'm saying, read on. For they are not all Israel, which are of Israel, right? Neither, because they are the seed of Abraham, right? are they all children? Right, because just, just because you come out of Abraham, that'll make you a child of God. Amen. Read on. Why? Amen. Right, right, right. Read on. Amen. But in Isaac... But in who? Amen. But... In Isaac, read that again. But in Isaac, what the Lord said. But in Isaac, read on. Shall thou see be called? So you have to come from Abraham, Isaac, and then Jacob to be called a child of God. If you're not, if you don't come from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, read on. That is, they which are the children of the flesh, you will be considered a child of the flesh. Read on. These are not the children of God. These are what? These, These are, are not, not the children, children of God. God. What did Paul say? These are not, not the children of God. God. How do you explain that, Edward? Break it down. Break it down. So this is, verse 8 is what I'm saying. So is everybody a child of God? But it is not as though the word of God has failed. Who is not a child of God? Anyone who has not been chosen is not a child of God. We so, are all in his image. Who, who what did this Lord verse just say? Hey, no, We're going to break it down. We're going to break it down. No, hold on. Look, you say have... some one thing, Vincent. Romans 9, 7 on down is saying totally different. Romans 9 saying everyone's a children of God? No, it's saying if you don't descend from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you are not a child of God. And yet Paul says in other places that you do not have to be a, in the flesh to be a child of Abraham. That those who are of the circumcision what verse? Of the heart, we're going to stay in this passage. We're going to stay in this passage. What verse? Verse, verse right. 8. You don't know. Stick verse 8. Him. Chapter Rather 9, verse 8. But it is not as though the word of God has failed. What is the word of God? Who? Who is the word of God? What's your point? Christ is. Christ is the word of God. He has not failed. Right. Everything that he has accomplished is true. Right. So, we have to look at everything that Jesus accomplished to understand this passage. We can't just say... So you're going to go to another book? No, 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 no. I'm going to stay right here. I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep going. <laughs> For not all who are descended from Israel belong to Israel. Right. That's, that's flat out proving my point right there. It says, not all people... Because Israel was a, a rename. All right? It's a nationality of people that have been renamed by God. What? Yeah, Jacob got renamed. Really? God gives everybody a new name. Because it explains itself in the next person. Yeah, yeah. Right. And not all who are children of Abraham because they are his offspring. But through Isaac, your offspring shall be named. So the, all who come through the child of promise. You guys know that Isaac was a forerunner, a pre-type of Christ, right? Right. Right. So, so was Adam. He was the, the first Adam. Jesus is the second Adam. So, 
you can you can look into Christ here too. Those who are children of no, Jesus are children of the promise. Don't ever do that. He just see how he tried to do that. He just tried to fit Christ into that when he's talking about I. That's no wow. I'm, I'm confounded myself. Like what do you do? He just tried so, to fit that so, when it says they are uh seed of Isaac. He tried to fit that Isaac. So, so Isaac was so offered up for a sacrifice, right? Abraham was willing to sacrifice Isaac. You don't, you don't understand God that regeneration. That's life. too deep for you. That's he was, he was an archetype of Christ. That, that's too deep for you. You don't understand that regeneration. I mean, all I've got from you tonight is you don't, you don't, you don't. Because you don't. All right, I have not accused you of anything. Well, well, you don't. I've had a lot of fun here tonight learning and growing. Well, you don't have no understanding. I mean, that's not clearly demonstrated. I do have understanding. You don't know the Bible. You don't know no verses at all. You just, you don't have no understanding. I could recite right. the, whole, the whole chapter for you right now. Recite the chapter? No, you can't. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For God has done what the law could not do by sending his son in the likeness of sinful flesh for sin and condemning sin in the flesh. What's the in difference? order that the righteousness... So I could, you know, it's, yeah, you don't know. it's falling on deaf ears. It's falling know. on deaf ears. You guys ain't listening. Oh, you don't know. The, 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 the point is, man. The point. The, the adoption is only for the Israelites. Right. right. That's right. the whole point here. Then how does anybody else get in? They were never. A, what is the adoption? What is the adoption? Galatians Righteousness four, by faith. Galatians four and four. What's the adoption? Romans eight. No. The chapter right before. Why are you going right? to Romans eight? For because it's right before chapter nine where you are. And you have to read everything in it's context. It's the word adoption. Yeah, it is. Spirit I of adoption right there. But I'm saying, what is the adoption? For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you no, did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of you're adoption. You're reading Romans 8 and 1 for no reason. What is the adoption? No, that's, that's 8, 14, and 15. What is, Roman, what is the adoption? That's the question. God choosing who he brings into his family. No. Yeah, when you go to no. adopt a child... You can pick which child you're going to adopt. Right, right. And you so, sign legal documents to make that adoption official. I'm going to explain what the adoption is. The adoption is the Lord casting away his sons and adopting them back as a father. Just, why, just like he sent Elijah the prophet, or also known as John the Baptist, before the second great coming of the Lord, is to what? So he can return the fathers back to the, the, the children back to the fathers. So that is a part of the adoption. Let's go to Galatians 4 and 4. It's going to explain that. Galatians. It's the book of Galatians, chapter 4 and verse 4. So the yeah. adoption is a group of, people, group, of people, group of people that were once children of God, which were not, but the God is adopting them back. That's what the adoption is, also known as the adoptions of sons. Let's bring this out. It reads, But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law right to redeem them that were under the law to do what to redeem them that were under the law who were under the law I'll tell you the truth all people god command god command god is sovereign over his whole creation this is good. let's go to leviticus 26 and 46 yeah the law was given to the israelites we just read so that. who were under the law we just read that in, uh, so you lied no, 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 everyone is held accountable by God's law when he comes back sure? to judge this world, yeah. No, because it says, as for their judgments, they have not known them. So, if everybody is held accountable, why isn't everybody going through Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, the blessings and the curses for the judgments of the law? Found it. See, you don't have the answer for that. Bring this out. It's the book of Leviticus, chapter 26, verse 46. Bring it out. These are the statutes and judgments and laws which the Lord made between him and the children of Israel. No, everybody. For the children, children of, of Israel. Israel. The whole wide world. For and the, the children, children of Israel. Israel. That goes back to my first point that I made in the beginning. Why didn't God bring everybody on Mount Sinai and make and give those laws to them? He only gave them to the Israelites. Right. So the people that were under the law were the Israelites. Right. right. Paul is trying to get these men from under the law so they can receive the spirit of the law. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer with the parable of the potter. Why didn't God bring all people? So the potter has the right to do with the clay whatever he wishes. Absolutely. To make vessels for honor, to make vessels for dishonor. Right. 
Is the clay is the clay to say to its maker, why have you made me? No. So that that's why he only brought the Israelite people because it was God's sovereign choice. Right. That's the whole point. They were under the law. You know what? So redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. The what? That, that we, we might receive the, the adoption, adoption of, of sons. sons. Now go to the Greek for that word adoption of sons. Huh. Let's see what that's talking about. Alright. You study hard, friend. I appreciate it. So this guy. Read this. Hey, the Lord said in 2 Timothy 2 and 15, study the show thyself approved. That's right. etched that's etched into a That's a God. That's etched into a wall. I mean, and your, on your wall? I mean, look, I didn't care about education. I thought I could make it through. God got a hold of me when I was 28. I'm 34 now, and I'm working through it. I need to learn. I have a lot to go through. Bring my out. ways in the world partly destroy my brain. The I'm Greek on, word on the for adoption of sons, who we should yo see ya, it says the relationship which God was pleased to establish between himself and the Israelites in performance to all other nations. Right. The nature and condition of the true disciple in Christ by receiving the Spirit of God into their souls became sons of God. Right. It says. Became sons. Uh, to all other nations. Two became was sons. Between himself and the Israelites. This is another definition I was looking for. Go back, yeah, read verse one, read the first one. Yeah. It says that relationship which God was pleased to establish between himself and the Israelites. And the what? And, and the, the Israelites, Israelites and performance to all other nations. See that? So that adoption of sons is the Lord adopting the Israelites back. Get by the new covenant, by the mediator, because that the old covenant, the Israelites, they broke. That's why when you read Hebrews 8 and 8, Jeremiah 31 and 1, he says, not according to the old covenant that I made with their fathers when the day when they came up out of Egypt, because they continue not. So God has to make a new covenant, which he's going to come back to them. They're going to be his people again, and Christ is going to be ruled. We're watching that happen right now. The amount of Israelites that have gone back to Jerusalem since 1964 is immaculate. You think these people, let's, let's put this around. You think these people are the real, are the real Jews? Right here, the so-called Ashkenazi, you think they're the real Jews? Okay, so you, you put those pictures side by side, how much do you understand about genetics? You think, no, I'm saying, I'm not talking about this picture. Do you think these people are the real ethnic Jews in the land? I mean, I don't know who those dudes are in that picture. So are you referring to those people? I mean, Because you're absolutely right. The amount of Israelites waking up in the last days is immaculate. Right. But what? If you're thinking about these people waking up, that's absolutely incorrect. Well, what is, what is the city of Jerusalem? What does that name mean to you? It's not what about what it means to me. Well, okay, so God gave it its name. What is, what is the city of Jerusalem? What is the name that it's called by? What does it mean? Well, we got to pull it up. Let's pull up Jerusalem. I think it's first mentioned as Melchizedek, King of Salem. It's also the same city. King of Salem, right. Or King of Righteousness. So uh, what's your point? By title, I think Salem is peace. So city of peace. And Jerusalem, I think, means new city of peace. Well, I mean, where the King of Peace comes back to set up his, his kingdom for a thousand years would be in the city of peace. Right. What's your point? It's a point that's going to be controversial, and it might anger you a little bit. I want to say, so you, you call yourselves the true Israelites. Where would you say your homeland is? Our homeland is Israel. Okay. We were stolen from our homeland, right? but we actually fled into the west coast of Africa in 70 AD, fleeing Roman persecution, right, in a siege. When we fled into the west part of Africa, the Africans, which are the Hamites that you read about in the Bible, they took us and they sold us to the Europeans, right. which the Irish actually funded the slave ships, right. 
So when they funded the slave ships, they had a slave trade. Some majority of us was actually died coming over here, but the ones that did make it over here, they reproduced, and here we are today, 2023 in America. temple goes up we know we already see signs of peace happening over there that's never happened before to allow that third temple to be built destroyed you don't have that third temple is not literal you don't have that i mean they got everything ready for it and they're trying to build it right now that's not a literal third temple the the abomination of desolation is supposed to stand in that temple and proclaim himself god that's not a that's not the literal temple the third abomination of desolation that temple is talking about the israelites right their bodies are the temple. So you're looking at them. You're looking at the temple right now. Being built. Uh, 2 Corinthians 3, 12, and 16. Right. Yeah. Wow. Uh, and 1 Corinthians 11, you know, eating the Lord's Supper, you know, if you eat this in the wrong matter, you will eat and drink yourself into destruction. And whoever destroys the temple will be destroyed. The temple of God will be destroyed. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Uh, yeah, thanks for engaging with me. I appreciate your hard work. It's been fun. Like, that's why I'm here. I'm here to learn, man. All right, so y'all will be Edomites according to the Bible. Y'all descend from Esau. I know that's what you believe. I think a lot higher yeah, than you. That's what the Bible says. What? And, and that's no, what that's what history, you think it says. That's what history says. And archaeology says. What? Right. And prophecy says that. I'm gonna That's keep right. and I'm gonna keep coming back and I'm gonna come back with the same scriptures every time. And I'm gonna right. hope that one day any one of these people hears it. One of you. Yeah. I don't care if yeah. all of you hear it. I just want one person to hear it. Yeah, the Bible says so our God is a personal God. He wants a personal relationship with you. The Bible says Satan the part of the Right. Is this the devil when he will flee? See that? So of course he's gonna keep coming back. Of course, you're gonna keep saying things. Yeah. Right. Right. All right. All right. That's what you think of me. Because I think a lot higher than you. What does that show? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I know. I know that. I know that the Bible only condemns people who. Actually, the only unforgivable sin mentioned in uh, Luke 20 is those who blaspheme the Holy Spirit. That's the only sin that doesn't get forgiven. So how can you condemn me based on who you think I am? Oh, above your, God's word. Because your ancestors, your forefathers. Yeah, yeah, but the only unforgivable sin is blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Well, your sins is not being forgiven. Right. right. I don't you, blaspheme the Holy Spirit. You can't repent. Satan can't repent because we already know his future is in Tartarus, the deepest oh, pit of hell. Well, Satan doesn't sin. His original... How did he get sent down to earth? Oh my See, God! What is what did Jesus say in Luke ten? What did Jesus say in Luke ten? You're dealing with Mormonism now. Oh, no. Mormonism came up with that belief that Satan was a musician. I don't believe that. I don't believe that. I don't believe that. Noted this guy, guys, God cast him down to earth. That is a part of Mormonism. Satan does not disobey the word of God. How, how is it? Hey, he's he's God's devil. God created him to be exactly what he is. Right. So. How does Satan sin when in Job 2, Satan presents himself? Uh, Luke chapter 10, Jesus says, I saw Satan cast from heaven like a bolt of lightning. You have to know what Satan that was talking about. Right. In that context, that was talking about the Roman Empire. So Satan, it's not a name. It's a title. It means the snake. Hasatan in Hebrew. Look, 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 look. The point is, you're an Edomite. You have to get ready for captivity. That's right. That's right. You have to get ready for slavery for what your ancestors have done. Right. And Christ is right. gonna, which is a so-called black man, he's gonna put you in chains. Are so you prepared if, for what that? What if it's the other way around? 
that you're going to be saved? That little person's slave. I'm going to be cast down? I mean, well, so I, I, I don't know if I'm going to be they saved. Had, they had judged. That's why the Lord said, give diligence to make your calling and election short. Right. So I don't know if I'm going to be saved. Most I will and I am. That's, that's hard to admit. Well, I don't know. Nobody knows if they're going to be saved or not. Right. right. No one. Unless the Lord said, didn't John, didn't John, didn't John write his first epistle and say, "I've written these things to you so that you might have assurance of your salvation"? The, point is, the book of First John is for you to is, read and say, right? "Yes, I've seen my life transformed the by the Spirit is, of God." The point is, you just say it might. Right. Might. Yes. What? It, when did so I you say? You might know. Might. So that you, you might. might know. Right. Meaning, it's not a hundred percent. Right. Now we're playing word games. That's right. a word. He game, means brother. instead of being unsure that you may be sure. What else do y'all have left? Some things are only solved Can through prayer, brother. Can we pray for you? Give me the book of Revelation chapter 8. Oh! Right? Are only solved through prayer. I'll pray. Give me John I'll Thaddeus. Pray pray God is not hearing you. The book of Ed Edward and Vincent, God is not hearing your prayers at all. Oh. We, could, we could try it. We could test that. Let's go. We know for sure that not, he's not hearing your prayers. Right now, let's turn this around. I know that God answers every prayer. This what? man, this man, he right says here. yes, no, or not he, yet. This man probably hearing your prayers, right? But not that's not man. a man. At the beginning, we that that times, man hearing your numerous prayers. Numerous times we have agreed that we don't that but, we don't subscribe to this, and yet you was, bring it up as an argument. Well, the Most High is not the Most high, the God of yeah. Israel is not hearing your prayers. Right. right. Bring this up because he only hears the prayers of Israel. Hey, God answers every prayer. Revelation eight four. Yes, no. The Book of Revelation. Chapter 8 and verse 4. No. And the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of the saints. With the what? With the, the prayer prayers of, of the, the saints. saints. Not the prayers of the heathen. With the, the prayers, prayers of the, the saints. saints. The prayers of Edward. With, with the, the prayers, prayers of, of the saints. saints. So it says, only the prayers of the saints come up before the Lord as a sweet incense. Ascend it up before God out of the incense. So where's the prayers of the other people at? They're an abomination to it. There you have it. So, so can we, can we, <laughs> can I pray for you? No, no. You don't want to see if it'll, it'll happen, if it's God will answer gonna it? It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen at all. We, we can, know. we can try and prove no, it. We, uh, we all know, you have to do is just we pray. know for sure it's not going to happen. If, if, it's, if it's not going to happen, what are you worried about? You said what? If it's not going to happen, then why are you worried about it? Because we're not, we're not going to let no heathens just pray over us right. and we don't know I mean, you can rebuke we're not it doing it we're not doing it that. if you don't want to hear it we're rebuking right. it right now right but bring out know, john 9 31 you don't know what's on my heart because the man out of the fullness uh, of his heart speaks it's the book of john what verse is that <laughs> it's the book of john chapter 9 and verse 31 no. now we know that god hears not sinners it says what now, now we, we know, know that, that god, god hears not sinners, sinners. No, god is hearing Who's not now we sinners. know that god hears not sinners read that again now, now we, we know, know that, that god hears not sinners read on. but if any man be a worship of god and do his will him he hear it so the lord not hearing the prayers of sinful wicked men Right. Tell me a man Bro, without sin. You said what? Look it out. Tell me a man without sin. Show me one. Christ. Yeah. Enoch. Mm. Noah. Mm. Noah was without no, sin. Mm. Noah was yes, Noah. Noah was perfect. Noah yeah. was without sin. Yes. That is wild. That's Noah's <laughs> sin. That is blast. Yeah. That is blast. Yeah. 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 That is blasphemy. Yeah. I mean, when you say yeah. Yeah. when Noah gets yeah. drunk yeah. immediately yeah. after getting yeah. off of the boat, hey, okay, not immediately. He had to go to the grace first. Yes. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. He laid naked on the beach, that and his sons had to cover his nakedness. A uh, blast. Was Abraham without sin? No, absolutely not. So he Abraham lied. He lied about his life. So, so if we show you that Abraham in the Bible didn't sin, Abraham are you going to be found to lie? Yes. Bring up, oh bring up the prayer of Manasseh. Said some things. Bring up the prayer of Manasseh. Bring, bring it out. Bring was, it out. Was Job without sin? He was. He was sinner. Yes. All have been. Con all are conceived in sin. Da David says in the Psalms that in nah, David in, sin. in, David sin. in conception Wait, on, he was conceived Job in sin. sin. It's no perfect. account Job of Job. Sin. It said he was what perfect. About Job? Job? What about when Job was Job perfect? Was, was getting mad at God. Was Job, was Job perfect? Absolutely not. No man is perfect. Oh, you gotta bring that up. 
Bring Joe. He was born. He was born in Jesus, Jesus only. He was born After in this, flesh. We're done talking to you guys. Just to bring yeah. Joe. I know chapter what you're one, verse one. Does not Bro, make no. it that he had no <laughs> sin or no sin nature. This is the book of Job, chapter one, verse one. Bring it up. There was a man in the land of Uz, Luke six forty-five, whose name was Job. Who's what? Whose, whose name, name was Job? Job. Say that again. Whose, whose name, name was Job? Job. You know what? And that man was perfect. And that what? And, and that, that man was perfect. No, Job wasn't perfect. And, and that, that man was perfect. And then you read the rest of the book. Is Job perfect? Yes or no? And then you read the rest of the book. Yes or no? Say, Hold on. What did God say? Perfect. Was Job perfect? Yes or no? If it if it uses that word, yes. But then you read the. You just said no. Then you read the rest of the book. Yes, Abraham said. Bring this out. Stop. What sin did Abraham commit? He lied. Bring this out. It's the prayer. Of Manasseh, it reads, O oh Lord, thou art the God of the just, also to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, right? which have not sinned against thee. Which have what? Which, which have, have not sinned, sinned against thee. thee. No, Abraham sinned. Which, which have, have not sinned, sinned against thee. thee. That again? Which have, have not sinned, sinned against thee. thee. That's why I don't read that book. Do you know who King Manasseh is? That's why I don't read that book. Well, you saying lies. this book? We already right. just proved to you that this book is true. That book just said that three men that walked this earth did not sin. Yes, it says that. So they went to heaven on their own merit. No, these yes. men are going to be reserved for salvation. So that, but they're saved because they had no sin. If I have no sin, I stand before God perfect. No. Right. And these men. Were so they perfect. didn't even need Christ. What, what? do you mean they, they didn't, didn't need Christ? Christ. Then you if don't the have law no could save, then what did Christ when, come when for? Abraham lied, That's the whole book of Hebrews. To? Who did he lie to? He oh, lied to the kings. Matter. He lied to the Egyptian, right? So, a li so what I can it? lie if it's for my personal gain. Hold on. Is what you're is saying. That is, is lying to a heathen a sin? Absolutely. Yeah. Why didn't God charge Abraham for that sin? He did charge him. What? When? Pull it up. Pull up the count now. Just because there's no immediate condemnation. Pull it up. Read it. Read it. Read it. Just because there's no immediate condemnation. Romans chapter 19 and verse number 11. Bring it out. You shall not steal. Nor deal falsely. Nor what? Nor deal falsely. Nor what? Nor deal falsely. Lying, right? To who? Neither lie one to another. Right? And ye shall not swear. It's like, uh, you got that verse 18. You know, read that again. Ye shall not lie one to another. One to what? One, one to, to another. another. It's talking about the Israelites. Of Start at verse 1. Sense. Verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto all the people. Yeah.